What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at some emulation on the PlayStation Vita. Now, I've owned a total of three PlayStation Vitas in its life cycle. Every time I got a hold of one of them, I bought them second hand. The firmware was too high to hack. So the first two, I think I sold one and I traded the other one. But I held on to this one. I purchased this one a few months ago for $50 on Craigslist and it had 3.69 on it. So I just went ahead and updated the 3.70 because I knew the flow had a jailbreak coming out soon for 3.69 and 3.70. And within the last week, he has released the jailbreak. So I was finally able to hack one of my PlayStation Vitas. So obviously this is going to play PlayStation Vita games perfectly because we have a PS Vita here. Be it a backup or a cartridge, it's really up to you. It'll also do PSP games and PlayStation 1 games perfectly. But I really wanted to see how it would perform with emulators like SNES, NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo, and some MAME stuff. So in this video, that's what we're going to be testing out. I literally just hacked this Vita the day before I made this video, so I'm kind of fresh off the boat. I completely understand that there are standalone emulators that are going to work better than the cores inside of RetroArch. But I like the all-in-one aspect of RetroArch. I use it on everything else. Raspberry Pi, PC, Mac, Linux. So why not test it on the PlayStation Vita? I will do another video with standalone emulators. Some of the stuff that doesn't work well in RetroArch will be displayed in that next video, like N64. Now, I know N64 is not great on the PlayStation Vita. I've done some research on it. But there are some games that will run at full speed. There are some freeware games that we can download directly inside of RetroArch, and I went ahead and installed Doom and Cave Story. Cave Story runs great on this little machine, but I wanted to show off Doom first. You can also get Quake, and there's a few others there. Then I'm going to move over to some Neo Geo, NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and some Sega Genesis. So we'll get right in here to Doom, and this is the only game I'm going to bore you with uh, loading up from the start here. But I have noticed that it does take a little time to load up, especially zip files. Like if I want to play Neo Geo or MAME, it can take anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds. It goes to a black screen and then it'll start the game. And that's something I've noticed here. I'm not sure if it's normal for older firmware or if it's because I have 3.70. If you're a Vita expert, let me know in the comments below. And like I mentioned, I'm sure there are some standalone emulators that are going to work much better for some of these systems. Next up, we have some Game Boy Advance emulation. This is Sonic Advance 3. This game has given me a lot of trouble on lower end arm chips, so I figured I'd throw it in this video. Seems to be running pretty well, but every once in a while, when I start getting up to full speed, I do notice some slowdown. It's definitely a lot better than the Chinese handheld consoles I've been testing out lately on my channel. And by the way, I'm using the VBA Next Core. After seeing how GBA performed, I was sure we were going to have really good luck with the original Game Boy and Game Boy Color. And with this core here, we also get that awesome cute green palette. The Vita is also going to be able to handle NES games with no trouble. SNES with SNES 9X 2005 Plus. I've tested 2002 and 2010. This is Hagani. This gives me issues on some lower end ARM devices. Here we're getting a steady 60 FPS. 
but when we move over to a little harder game to emulate, we start seeing the issues here. Like Yoshi's Island, I've tested SNES 9X 2002, 2005, 2005 Plus, 2010, and I still get slowdowns even in the main menu of Yoshi's Island. This is one of those games I'll be testing again with a standalone SNES emulator, so definitely keep an eye out on the channel. We're just not getting full speed here. Sega Genesis, otherwise known as Mega Drive in other parts of the world. This is Gunstar Heroes, getting a constant 60 FPS. I'm using the Pico Drive Core. Performance is great on the PS Vita. I've personally never been a really big fan of Game Gear, but here it is running on the Vita. The arcade versions of The Simpsons running in MAME and the core I'm using here is MAME 2003. Here's X-Men, the arcade game. Now, I did try this with MAME 2003, but performance wasn't great, so I just switched over to MAME 2000, and it works fine. TurboGrafx-16, otherwise known as PC Engine in other parts of the world, works great on the Vita. Unfortunately, I couldn't get Super Graphics working. There isn't the Beetle Super Graphics core in here, but I was hoping it would work with Beetle fast. So overall, the PlayStation Vita does double as a really nice emulation handheld for lower-end systems. Unfortunately, I don't think N64 is ever going to run at full speed with every game on the Vita, but I guess we could hold out for hope if we really wanted to. So as it sits right now, I was scanning through Amazon and eBay. I see these going for $270 new. It's the Japanese import model, but it'll work just like this. Just change it to English and you can hack it probably comes with older firmware, that's too expensive for this unit. Unless there's a ton of Vita games that you really, really want to play. But personally, I'm not really big into the Vita games. I haven't really looked into it. If you guys know of some good Vita games, let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I also looked on eBay. I see them going for $80 with a couple scratches on them, up to $150. These are all used prices. Your best bet would be check your local marketplaces like Craigslist, OfferUp, LetGo, and Facebook Marketplace. If you can pick one up in the range of 40 to 70 bucks, I think it's a pretty good little handheld. Personally, I wouldn't spend $250 for a new imported one, but to each his own. I do have more videos coming up on the Vita. If you're interested in hacking this thing and you want me to do some tutorials, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, check out Tech James. He does some really awesome Vita tutorials. I'll leave a link for his channel in the description. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the Vita, just let me know in the comments below. I will be working on getting bezels up and running inside of RetroArch on this device. I have installed them, but for some reason they're not displaying correctly. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button and maybe subscribe to the channel. But like always, thanks for watching.